Welcome to section five, behaving ourselves again. In this section, we're going to continue looking at some more behavioral patterns. We'll start with the observer pattern, then go on to look at strategy, memento, template, and finish by having a look at reactive programming. This first video is about the observer pattern. In this video, we will look at what it is, how it works, some similarities with MVC, which we covered in an earlier section, and we'll finish by showing an example of how different stock markets might observe a company. The observer pattern defines a one-to-many dependency between objects, so that when one object changes state, all its dependents are notified and updated automatically. So here is how it works. We start by defining an object, which is the keeper of the data model or the business logic, and we call this the subject. We then delegate all view functionality to decoupled and distinct observer objects. Observers register themselves with the subject when they are created. So whenever the subject changes, it broadcasts to all its registered observers that it has changed. And then each observer can query the subject for the subset of its state that it's responsible for monitoring. And this allows the number and type of view objects to be configured dynamically, instead of being statically specified at compile time. Also note that this protocol describes a pull interaction model. So instead of the subject pushing what has changed to all observers, it's each observer that is responsible for pulling its particular window of interest from that subject. This is less efficient than the push model, but more flexible. Also, note that there are some similarities between the observer pattern and MVC, which we covered in section three. The subject can be thought of as the model in MVC and the observer's different views. One slight difference is that the observer pattern is implicitly unidirectional, so it doesn't really state how the view is supposed to change the model. In MVC, the controller allows for a bidirectional influence and creates this kind of feedback loop between the subject and the views, as you can see in the diagram here. Okay, so let's have a look at an example in code. So we'll start by creating our observable class. It maintains a reference to its observers. It has a register method to register new observers, unregister to remove them, and finally, at the end, it has an update observers method, where we call observer updates for each observer in observers. Then we'll define our abstract observer class. It just has an update method. And finally, we'll define two concrete subclasses that implement this observer interface. So we'll have two different kinds of stock markets, American stock market and European stock market. In this case, the update method will simply print out the information it has received. So let's have a look at how this example works. Okay, so I've imported the classes I need. I'm going to start by creating, say, a really big company, which we'll consider to be our observable. Okay, so both stock markets will care about this company, and that's why we're going to register them as observers. And then we'll do the same thing for the European stock market. Okay, so now our observable has two observers. So let's send an update. Okay, so we're going to send the update that the CEO has unexpectedly resigned. And there, you can see that once we send the update, um, we're triggering the update method on each of the observers. And it's been received by both the American stock market and the European stock market. So this is how both observers are notified. Now, as we mentioned, they are then free to um, update themselves as required. So for example, suppose this company um, is 
more prominent in America than it is in Europe. So perhaps the American stock market will adjust itself or make greater adjustments to itself than the European stock market would upon receiving this news.